Thailand's wetlands are vast, thriving, and home to species found nowhere else on Earth. For thousands of years, these lowland marshes have supported a rich ecosystem. Nearly 4,000 years ago, they became a vital part of Thai culture and tradition through rice cultivation, a practice that still shapes the landscape and sustains local communities today. Among these ancient fields, hidden beneath the water's surface, lies a secret, one of the world's rarest fish species, one of the most endangered animals on the planet. In today's adventure, Rodrigo is on a journey into the heart of these wetlands, hoping to encounter a critically endangered species once believed to be lost to time, Somfong's Raspora. Here, rice fields stretch to the horizon. Thick vegetation covers the marshy waters, forming an underwater forest that shelters an incredible array of freshwater species. In these lowland marshes, a rare balance of tradition and nature persists. Key to this balance is the water buffalo, a creature that has worked alongside rice farmers for centuries, helping to keep these wetlands alive. These water buffaloes are more than just farm animals. They're natural engineers, almost like living tractors. With their broad mouths, they graze on aquatic plants and grasses, preventing overgrowth that would otherwise smother biodiversity and clog water channels. For the rice farmers of Thailand, these buffaloes are invaluable partners. And for the fish below, they're a lifeline. By grazing, wallowing, trampling and spreading dung, these animals enhance the diversity by creating microhabitats, benefiting not only fish, but also water birds. This wetland is home to numerous migratory birds, and though they aren't here at this time of year, we were able to spot some resident species, many of which are expert fish hunters. Others take advantage of the aquatic vegetation to forage. Take a look at this bronze-winged jacana and its chicks. They use their long feet to walk effortlessly over the dense aquatic vegetation. Below the surface, life is thriving. Aquatic plants cover the marshy waters, creating a dense underwater forest where fish can feed, breed and find shelter. So, without further ado, let's see what Rodrigo has found in these wetlands. I just drove two hours to a rice field and behind me there's something very special. So in this rice field you can find a fish that was presumed extinct for the past 30 years. Eventually they found a small population of that species and that species is Trignostigma, some Fongsi, and behind me we'll hopefully find some of them. So right now I'm going to get changed, I'm going to get my snorkeling gear, I'm going to go swimming in this rice field which is a bit odd I know, but hopefully I'll find these extremely rare critically endangered fish, one of the top 100 most critically endangered animals in the world. So let's go, I'm gonna get changed. I'm gonna jump in the water and see if we can find it. Ready now, let's get in the water. But it's the rainy season, it's been raining a lot. And over here, you have sort of the rice field overflow. So uh, they have to keep the water at a certain level. Oh my God, hands on my feet. They have to keep the water at a certain level in the rice field. Uh, to grow the rice so they have sort of a overflow and when it rains a lot the water flows into different fields into irrigation canals and the fish the fish love this so during the rainy season they'll congregate in these overflows and here next to me there's thousands and thousands and thousands of fish and amongst some of the rasboros you can find the trignostigma uh, so fong uh, so let me show you Wow. 
Look at this underwater landscape. Would you have ever guessed that a flooded rice field could look like this below the surface? Just take in the sight of thousands of fish gathering around this fast-flowing pipe. Everywhere you look, there's a different species darting about. Let's start with the most common fish here, the cherry spot Rasbora. They're easy to spot with their bright red blotches on the dorsal and caudal fins. But look closely. Not all of these fish have that red blotch. Some are missing it on their dorsal fin. Those are red-tailed rasboras. They look almost identical and even shoal together. In fact, a lot of unrelated species here look strikingly similar, including our target Somfong's rasbora. This phenomenon, known as convergent evolution, occurs when similar environmental pressures lead unrelated species to evolve similar features. The black stripe you see on so many of these fish is a prime example. Most likely the lateral stripe helps fish blend into their environments. For small fish, this coloration can make it harder for predators to single them out, allowing them to blend into dappled shadows and vegetation. But thousands of small fish in one place are bound to attract attention. Snakeheads are here taking advantage of the abundant prey. The striped snakehead is one of the rice field's apex predators. With their elongated bodies, they are perfectly adapted for sudden bursts of speed, allowing them to capture smaller fish. Snakeheads are unique because of their ability to breathe air using a special organ that functions much like a lung. As top-level predators, they keep the population of smaller fish in check, preventing any single species from becoming overly dominant. This natural regulation helps sustain biodiversity. Some of these striated snakeheads have even figured out a clever hunting technique. As the water rushes through the pipe, smaller fish are sucked from one field to another. In the middle of the pipe, there's a gap where fish spill out, straight into the waiting jaws of the snakeheads. Look at how this snakehead can change its appearance to camouflage. As it moves toward the gap in the pipe, it shifts from a pale color with no patterns to bold stripes, just like its name suggests. This color change helps it blend into its surroundings, making it harder for prey to spot it as it sneaks up for an easy catch. Most fish here swim in mixed species shoals, increasing their safety in numbers. In a large group, each fish has a lower chance of being singled out by a predator. And when multiple species that look similar shoal together, they create the illusion of a larger, unified mass, which confuses and deters predators. This strategy is particularly helpful if you're a small, critically endangered species with a limited population. If you look carefully, you might just spot a few Somfongs rasboras in these shoals. Males of this species are a coppery orange, while females are more yellowish and both have that characteristic black stripe on their sides. Somfong's rasbora has a fascinating history. First described in 1958, it was nearly lost by the 1980s due to urban expansion, dam construction and pollution. In 2012, the IUCN listed it as one of the world's 100 most endangered species. Then, a miracle. A small wild population was rediscovered in 2014 within Thailand's central floodplains. Sadly, the original site was destroyed by 2017, but a second site has since been found. Today, this fragile population persists, but the future remains uncertain. For a species with such a tiny population, even minor disruptions can be devastating.
Another incredible camouflage technique is being almost completely transparent. Take the princess carpet, for example, nearly invisible in these waters, making them easy to miss when snorkeling. Another clear species we encountered was the Paracella oxygastroides, blending perfectly into the background. While some fish rely on being nearly invisible, others prefer to show off their stunning colors. Look at this single sparkling gourami specimen that we filmed, and its close relative, the croaking gourami. There is no shortage of gouramis in these fields. Look at these three-spot gouramis. Another fascinating species that we found is the climbing perch, capable of breathing air and even traveling short distances on land. It is uniquely equipped to survive in these ever-changing wetlands. Shoaling alongside the climbing perch, we spotted Malayan leaf fish, a species that migrates to flooded fields during the rainy season and returns to its home waters during the dry season. Despite this abundance of life, the rice fields face significant challenges. Conservation efforts require the involvement of local farmers who depend on this land for their livelihoods. Finding harmony between agriculture and wildlife preservation is critical to maintaining this unique ecosystem. Thankfully, conservationists, scientists and local communities are collaborating to protect these habitats. There's hope for the survival of Somphong's Rasbora and other endangered species. Ultimately, the future of these wetlands depends on awareness and dedicated conservation. Protecting these rice fields ensures they remain a sanctuary, not only for one of the world's rarest fish, but for countless other species that rely on this delicate environment. By preserving this ecosystem, we safeguard a living legacy of biodiversity that has thrived here for generations. As we wrap up this journey through this amazing ecosystem, I have something special to share with you to bring a piece of this underwater magic into your daily life and help support the channel. Rodrigo has created a 2025 calendar with 12 species from this expedition. This calendar showcases exclusive photos of rare species we've encountered, like the Better Simplex and the Better Splendens. Some of these featured species haven't even been posted on the channel yet, but will appear in the upcoming weeks. So you'll get an early glimpse of what's to come. Each month, you'll enjoy a close-up look at a new, beautiful species printed in full color on eco-friendly, high-quality paper. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below. Thank you for helping support the channel and for joining us on this journey.